Hi everybody, it's Sally here and today we're coming to uh, the number four or the fourth video in my LK150 series which is going to be talking about different casting off methods. I think this was the thing that really alerted me to the fact that there is a lot lacking in the um, instruction book that comes with this LK150 machine because I went all the way through it looking for information on casting off and the only one I could find was on page 38. And it's just shown as backstitch method. It doesn't actually mention that it's a cast-off technique. Very strange. And it was the first time ever I think I'd seen in a machine knitting instruction book that it actually instructs you to cast off your knitting by backstitching through the open loops with a bodkin. Very bizarre. Um, it is certainly a valid cast-off method. Just trying to, I did... Um, experiment with it just now just to refresh my memory um because actually they the way they show it in the book is not the way i would do it um other than that the instructions are perfectly okay um because they show you back stitching with the the live stitches still in the needle hooks where if i was going to i can't imagine why on earth i'd want to but if i was going to use this method um i would do a, three or four rows in a waste yarn so that the knitting drops down below the needle hooks and then you can get at it from underneath and hold it as you backstitch across and um, it produces this um, with these little bits of knitting it's really quite tricky to see but that's the, the the cast off edge it produces which is I don't think it's particularly attractive anyway um, and it's certainly not a method that you can employ if you want or easily employ if you want to join pieces of knitting. Um, for example, on shoulder seams where you put your front and your back piece together, knit a row and then cast them off. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of other methods to cast off, uh, which are more traditionally used on a knitting machine. Uh, now, when I'm casting off, I nearly always, well, I always unthread the carriage. I've just got a piece of knitting on here and pulled down a length of yarn from the overhead master. Don't want it to be pulling as I as I'm casting off. And the most simple and effective way to cast off is to again you can do this from either side, is to take the end stitch, transfer it to its neighbour, pull both forward, and then just wrap the uh the tail of the yarn through over the, the, the needle and hook it back through. Then pull that one forward, transfer it to its neighbor, hook and pull through. And that is one good way of casting off. Now the difficulty with this is that it's very tempting to pull this a bit tight as you go. And you can end up with your cast off seam is, is a little bit snug. Um, and so one way of overcoming this is um, as you take the end stitch off and transfer it to its neighbour, pull the empty needle back out to D position and then instead of just going into that loop, wrap it over the neighbouring needle, pull it through the loop, go through the two stitches on the needle and come forwards. Transfer, pull the empty needle forward, go over the top of it and back through the loops on the on this needle here. Uh, so transfer again to the neighbour, pull forward, over and through. And as you're doing this, it leaves the a thread of yarn on these needles that are out in D position, um, which is fine. They can stay there all the way until you get to the other end and then you just pull it off off the needles when you've completed your cast off so um, I'll continue with this this is the method I probably most commonly use um, because it gives a beautifully even cast off edge uh, it's great for if you're sewing pieces together and it doesn't pull in too tight. But as with all cast off techniques on a knitting machine, none of them are particularly fast. 
so it's just something you have to grin and bear and uh, get into a little rhythm uh, talk to yourself tell yourself a story listen to music whatever it might be um as you cast off across I mean on a single a standard gauge machine where you, it's particularly on a wide piece where you might be casting off up to 200 needles it is a a long and slow process. Um, some of the standard gauge machines have linkers that will link off and do a cast off for you, but these plastic ones don't. So it is always a manual process. Perhaps I shouldn't have cast on quite so many needles. I'll do a little bit fewer on the next one. But I like this because it leaves the knitting suspended on the machine, even though it's cast off. And as a result, um, the cast on edge doesn't get dragged by its own weight and turn out all uneven. It's a very nice, even cast off edge. This is the um, nearest equivalent, by the way, to those of you that got metal machines to the sink post cast off. Um, or you cast off around the sink post or around the gate paste, as it's sometimes called. Um, to get that lovely neat edge. This is the uh, nearest equivalent to it. So nearly there. And then we've got the last one on the on the edge here. I just take the yarn away, cut it and Pull it back through the last loop to secure off. And there you are. There is um, the neighbouring needle cast off. So um, I just need to pull that off the, the needles now and it's all done. Um, and once you've you know, pulled this out and steamed it, you'll get a very nice neat edge. As you can see, um, probably just those last few on the edge here before I started doing the needle wrap. You don't get this additional loop of yarn up here, but um, but it, it is very tricky if you're not going to do the wrap to get the, the cast off edge even. I mean, with a lot of practice, you will get it. Um, but if you until at such time as you, you are uh, more confident and more accomplished, um, the neighbouring needle cast off gives this lovely neat edge. And as you can see, if you're seaming it, you've got a lovely neat row of holes in inverted commas where you're your stitching line will go and likewise through if you look at it from the back side here it's not that clear maybe but there is a nice neat edge of holes that you'll be back stitching through when you're doing your seam so that is um, my favoured way of casting off um, the other way that is commonly used is the uh, loop through loop cast off which you use with a latch tool um, oops. So I'm just going to do a quick, well, let's do an e-wrap cast on while I'm about it. The loop through loop cast on is made by like uh, latching through the last loop row of loops on the knitting and it gives a, a much uh, a cast off edge with a much lower profile than the one like this. Um, let's have those on two. Across. So I just need to get a bit of knitting established.
knitted. So um, I've knitted a few rows of knitting and ended up with my carriage on the left. Um, you need to stop one row before you intend to do the loop through loop cast off because your last row needs to be knitted at a much higher tension um, than your main knitting. Normally about three whole numbers. So I've been knitting this on stitch size four. So I'm going to turn it up to seven and knit one row. So you must have much bigger loops for this last row of knitting um, because um, if the loops are too small as you're latching them across, it'll just pucker the work up. Now I need to find my latch tool. Here we go. And I'll just take the, the end needle off its hook. I'm working towards where the thread is. So I start at the opposite end and then I just go into the next needle latch it through the first one and take it off its needle to the next one latch and remove oops quite caught the thread there that's it move and you just go through catching each stitch through the, the previous one all the way across. Now I must admit I don't do this form of cast off very often so I'm not terribly quick at it but um, it's a, a nice method to use if you want a cast off edge that's um, possibly going to be visible rather than the, uh, the first one I showed you because it does give a nice like chain stitch finish to the cast off edge. stitch. I just need to take that last claw way off. Cut the thread and pull it through. And there is the latch tool cast off. So um, as you can see it's uh, got that nice chain it actually matches the latch tool cast on quite nicely so if you want two ends of something to look the same this is a good method to choose um who what other one can i talk about um i really think that's probably about it as far as the the, the main types of cast off are are concerned um uh, there are other versions uh, diana sullivan again does a figure of eight cast off which looks very neat um, you know, if you have a little trawl around YouTube, you'll probably find some other versions. But the, these are the main ones that you that will serve you perfectly adequately for most garment construction. Um, so I hope I hope this is useful.